Welcome to my deep dive course about writing clean, efficient, and reusable code for Revit plugins. If you ever served the internet for guides on how to do things in Revit API, you've likely encountered a wide array of blogs and tutorials. So usually that's what we do on a daily basis. We solve our problems regarding Revit API. Uh, we face some issues, some problems that that we don't know how to solve, right? And we gotta look them up on Google. And there are usually tons of blogs and, tutorial, and tutorials on how to go about dealing with them. And while these resources are invaluable because they provide step-by-step -step instructions on, on tasks like, like how to create sections in Revit or how to go around this specific problem uh, or how to go around like solving a specific, like dealing with specific ex exceptions that Revit API uh, th throws at you. So it's more about their focus is on, uh, is an ins and outs of Revit API, not more about like how to create that reusable or how to create reusable solutions for this. So, and that's okay, right? Because each block uh, each tutorial, it serves its purpose, right? So most of uh, blocks and tutorials regarding Revit API, they serve the purpose of demonstrating functionality quickly and effectively, right? So you go there, you find the solution, right? You don't, you don't need to understand like a lot of abstractions out there. Uh, it just thrown out at you and you, you can just like copy and paste, I could say, but uh, most of the time you do need to tweak something. But at the end of the day, they when they do this, right, they the code isn't designed with reusability in mind, right? Because it just it's just for a quick reference. Uh, of course, that would be cool if they provided like a clean version of this, because sometimes I've actually served the ad for blogs and tutorials, and it goes both on Google and on YouTube. And usually uh, it goes with small things that affect you as, as a developer, especially when you're just getting started. For example, there are some videos on YouTube uh, regarding Revit API and they just use different naming conventions. So I'm not talking about like the design itself, but with, with first things that you got to learn about naming conventions. And using C Sharp, they use naming conventions from Python. Sometimes they... Uh, what's even worse when people kind of mix them, right? So what, uh, like they have a bunch of variables for the first one, they use Python convention for the second one, they use Java convention for the third one, uh, they use C-sharp convention. That is very frustrating for beginners. Uh, so that's where this course comes in. It's not even that much of a course. It's more about course slash playlist. So we will, I will have a cohesive set of videos, so videos that are that are regarding one specific problem, right? And uh, I'll just have a bunch of videos regarding these topics under under the corresponding playlist, and that will be a part of this course, and that is for free. My main goal is to kind of bridge the gap uh, by not only showing you how to implement various features using Revit API, but also guiding you on how to refine these solutions into clean, reusable components for your future projects. So it's not only about let's solve this problem in Revit API and let's talk about the inner parts of Revit API and that's it. We will solve it and see how that goes. Um, uh, we'll solve it and see how that, how that can be reused. Uh, so this approach will kind of enhance your coding practices uh, and elevate your project's efficiency, right? Because imagine writing a, a plugin and usually each plugin that you write, you can take out something, you can take something out of this and make it reusable for your next plugins, right? That's if you if you are kind of earning money for being a software developer in BIM domain. But again, before this, I do want to point out that uh, I do value and appreciate the wealth of knowledge that all the blogs provide us with, right? Because they are kind of helping us build the foundation for understanding 
uh, Rivet API, but the way we use it, it's all up to us. So that's what I want to do there. So let's quickly go over what will be covered in this course. So we will cover data structures. Probably uh, you'll, you've already used them. You know, there, there are some things that we use, but we don't know the name for it. And we don't know that we are actually using them. So in this course, you will learn them more in depth. Uh, design patterns and principles, uh, that's something that usually people just aware of and they just Google that up, uh, just read about this, understand nothing <laughs> because they don't have like practical uh, experience with it and just leave it. So in this case, that will be more about purely practical things. So we will just, and the truth be told, all these topics so far have been um, I've kind of written all these topics based on the videos that I've already recorded for this course. I already have like around like 10 videos recorded for this uh, at the time of recording this intro. And I've just uh, kind of curved out, I just uh, kind of got the, the topics that I discussed there. Uh, so that's that shows that it's all about practical things. I just showed what what we actually did and I written I written uh, down all these uh, all the all the things that we will be covering. So design patterns and principles we'll cover them also. Solid grass pattern principles they will be mostly uh, again practical. I don't I, I don't think that I'll touch a lot of on theoretical stuff. Uh, test driven development I I think most of you don't kind of uh, don't use this in your development regarding Revit API because it does require more effort to do this, but we will see how that happens. And in and actually in the course, in this kind of things, most of the time we will start without Revit, Revit API at all, right? We will see the problem, uh, so understand what we need to deal with, then we will abstract ourselves away from Revit, implement this without Revit, and then see how we can integrate it in Revit. I think a lot of Revit repetition there. <laughs> Uh, also mastering link and recursion. This course will also show you a lot of great things regarding functional programming in C Sharp, because uh, we gotta stay, we gotta keep up with uh, with the latest things that C Sharp is going with, and uh, C Sharp currently is actually is awesome for having these hybrid apps in a sense of they match, they mix uh, paradigms. So we use object oriented paradigm programming paradigm and we use functional programming in C-sharp. They're both great and when you know how to uh, mix them, right, because for some purposes f functional programming is way much better and for some purposes uh, oriented programming is way much suited. So that's what I really like and uh, I'll show you uh, yeah, how we can leverage these. Uh, yeah, functional, uh, function curing and pattern matching Again, all these things, they're regarding functional programming and it's better for you to watch the video to understand what the hell they mean. But I genuinely believe that Link is one of the greatest things that .NET came up with. Uh, that's one of my favorite libraries that really show you good design, that really show you how to make things reusable. That That's a great inspiration for me to, to learn about all these things because uh, they actually do all the stuff that I uh, list here, right? They leverage extension methods. They give us that fluent API that allows us to read your code as if you're reading some English sentences. So that's what I truly like. Also, one of the unique features of this course is that we'll, uh, we will learn about incremental refactoring techniques. Uh, if you want to know more about refactoring, you got to read the book called... Uh, I think just refactoring by, by, by Mar Martin Fowler. Um, but the main idea here is that most of the time when you go to YouTube or read any tutorial, the main idea is to show you the end solution and that's it. Meaning we have a problem and we have a solution for this. That's it. But that's not usually how that works in the real world. Usually you have a problem, you solve it somehow just to the point where that works, right? At least that works. And uh, then you got to refactor this. You got to make it better in terms of uh, cleanliness and readability of the code, not in terms of let's change the functionality. No, in terms of 
how we can make this reusable, how we can make this easier to read and stuff like this. So each problem actually will be solved in a couple of steps, right? So first we will solve this using more of a dirty way and then we'll make it better, see if everything works. And that's the part where you will see the benefit of uh, using test-driven development. And you'll actually learn a bit about test-driven development. Also, we're going to know practical Revit applications. So, uh, again, my main goal is to first abstract yourself away from, from Revit so we don't worry about being in the context of Revit and we just quickly iter have, this, have, have a quick way of iterating over our... Uh, uh, over like implementing whatever we're working on and then we will switch to Revit and see how that can be implemented there. Also learning ex exercises. So here in this uh, kind of course, uh, whenever we will, whenever it comes to solving a problem, I will show you how that's supposed to work and you will, s and I would like you to take a pause and just try to solve it on your own that will be really crucial for you to uh, to take the most out of this. Uh, and yeah, I hope that that will be something that can streamline how you learn things and how you comprehend the information discussed there. And also creating your own custom libraries to reuse in Revit plugins. That's what uh, that's kind of the main goal. This mastering reusable solutions for Revit plugin development. That's actually in the core for this because by understanding all these concepts, you'll be able to extract things that can be reusable into a separate library and then use them from your next plugins. Therefore, you will your efficiency, the efficiency of your subsequent plugins will skyrocket. They will be pretty scalable and you'll, uh, you'll make sure that you develop it faster and faster. Also, uh, what I wanted to uh, kind of tell you before diving into the course, uh, I want to highlight that I have a kind of a comprehensive course uh, about Revit API. Uh, you can check it out on my uh, website. That's a detailed course about Revit API that really explains everything in depth in the sense of how that's built internally and all these things uh, that, are, that are happening behind the scenes and actually teach you through going through each of the steps. So far, it's I think it's around like 30 hours. Uh, you can go to my website. I think the name of the demand, demand will probably change. I'm not quite sure for the time being, but you can go out here, check out what others say, check out frequently asked questions. Uh, you can go to all courses uh, or like, let's click on any of this button to go there. And I know the the image for this currently sucks. I don't like it at all, but I'll kind of work on this more to make it better. Uh, you can see the overview. The main thing, you can see the curriculum, the uh, topics that will be covered. And the main thing that I want to tell you is that don't feel pressured to buy it right away. First of all, I've included four first four chapter uh, first four chapters for free. So you can see how how we go about it, right? So it doesn't mean that you need to buy it right away. Again, if you have like problem financial problems, I still provide a lot of free content on YouTube, so don't feel pressured. This is, yeah, that's a very detailed one. So this is where it has structure. And it actually, for example, it, it's very detailed in terms of geometry. As you can see, it has a lot of topics in geometry. Uh, so that's where it goes really in depth. Uh, so yeah, if you if you're interested in this, I will be happy to have you on my uh, on my course. Keep in mind there is still a slight issue with uh, with payment. So just if you have any problems, just hit me up via contact or just uh, write me in the email that I'll leave uh, in the description below. And yeah, if you find uh, my content useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, your support helps in creating more content like this and reaching more enthusiasts eager to learn uh, about Revit API development. So yeah, thank you, uh, thank you for um, staying, uh, for starting this journey with me. And yeah, let's get started.